And our next panellist is Scott McIndoe from Legacy. Back in 91, Scott and his wife Judy campaigned to stop the decimation of the Cheltenham Beach cockle fishery. They made connections at that time with Ngāti Paua and Ngāti Whātua, which allowed for rahui and regulatory, regulatory closure to occur. That started a trusting relationship with Tangata Whenua that flourishes even today. After the Ministry of Fisheries attempted to introduce the notion of a proportional share for the public as the basis for allocating inshore fisheries catches in 2000, Scott contributed to 15 years of public awareness work on the issue, including numerous campaigns and several court cases. Scott advocates for legal, affordable and achievable fisheries management decisions that ensure inshore fisheries rebuild to at least 40% of the unfished biomass. He believes wasteful practices must be eliminated and a better understanding achieved about what motivates people to conserve fish for future generations. He also believes we need more research on the value of the economics of recreational fishing and abundance. Scott says the key issue facing the tikapa moana is motivating people to conserve fish as required to achieve abundance, at least 40% of the unfished biomass. Give a huge warm welcome to Scott McIndoe. <coughs> Eina mana, eina reo, ro, ranga tirama, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, I'm very uh, pleased and privileged to be in the sea change space. Thank you, um, Els a lot to answer for. Um, are people able to be motivated to conserve? Because if we don't conserve fish, we're in trouble. Because as we rebuild the fisheries, and the public grow fast, and the technologies that we're getting our hands on, which are pretty wicked and lethal, and the information that's at our fingertips, make, making fishing almost idiot-proof, uh, if you can push www catch me it's sort of all there friday afternoon go here push drop the color and the certain type of lure at two o'clock and you'll catch me it's really scary so somehow or rather as we juggle this aspiration of abundance 40 percent of the unfished biomass b40 or bust that's our slogan if you like it's one of our catchphrases how are we going to manage ourselves? How are we going to motivate people to conserve, to leave fish in the water, to, to rebuild these fisheries? That's the, the dilemma. And the answer, in my opinion, is very simple, and I need a little bit of cooperation, and I don't want you to overthink these questions. I just want to put, ask you to put your hand up, please, to a couple of simple questions. Who here is ready and willing and enthusiastic to conserve fish to accelerate the rebuild of fisheries. And who's not interested? There's always a couple of us. <clears throat> now, the second, the second question is who here is ready and willing to conserve fish? in order to have those fish allocated to people who will use indiscriminate bulk harvesting methods to then export a relatively low value commodity to Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane where it's available at 10 bucks a kilo. Hands up please, who, who's happy to conserve fish to see those same fish on a one way first class ticket to Sydney? It's really simple. We are willing to conserve fish, it's a state, it's, everyone Virtually everyone said, yeah, I'm in. I'll, I'll play your game. I'll listen. I'll, I, I, I'll, I'm receptive to some consultation whereby I might be encouraged to embrace a raft of measures that will see me catch less fish because it's going to stay in the water, breed, get bigger, and rebuild the fishery. That's the motivation. It's just simply knowing that we're not propping up this bizarre agenda to double the export of primary produce. And that, do you want it? Thank you very much, thank you Scott. <laughs> Out of time, but I'm not sure you quite finished, but uh, let me open it up to the whole panel for a discussion that obviously you will be part of as well. I've got a 
little teaser that might go on. Go on, do it. Do uh, it. Tease us. We love a bit of teasing. Legacy is the public outreach uh, of the New Zealand Sport Fishing Council, which is a representative organisation that tries to do the right thing by its 30,000 strong hapu. Now, our policy is very simple. Minister, show some leadership, set a target, which you're allowed to do. It's affordable, it's legal, it's achievable. Set a target of 40% of the unfished biomass. Reassure us, assure us that you're not going to make the problem worse by allocating any variations to the total allowable catch to the commercial sector. We're not asking you to cut anything. There's it's really expensive and we've got a bit of uh, egg on our chin as well. We can improve our behaviour. And then what we're undertaking to do is research what works, what doesn't work, and then consult. And we believe we can consult because we've actually got a bit of mana out in the public sector. And we'll come back to you, Minister, with a raft of measures that you can safely regulate without fear of a blowback. Uh, where the, the public will conserve fish. They will change their attitudes, their expectations and behaviours in order to rebuild fisheries. That's policy. And it's very important. There's some copies of that here, and I encourage you to help yourself after the event. Um, it's all about, and it's all dependent upon, this notion that people will play the game. They will conserve I certainly uh, support the idea, Scott, of uh, increasing the biomass of most of our key species to at least 40% of the previous biomass. And I think uh, in my little talk later on, I'll, I'll mention some of the problems that have arisen because we haven't got enough fish left in the sea and they can't carry out their ecological functions anymore. Just um, wanted to jump in and, and, and mention something that I was going to mention before, but ran out of time. Uh, everyone, almost everyone, right, put their hand up, and only maybe one or two put their hand up on the second question. This room is full of people who are converted for these ideas. This is not a debate. We all agree on most of the stuff that's being talked about. The problem is the people who are unconverted are not here. This is the problem. So any political decision that there's going to be a vote to elect some minister who needs to see this stuff, if their voters are not exposed to these messages, then it's very hard for us to make progress in this planning situation. And I just wanted to put it down as a bit of a theme that I'll discuss a little bit more later on in this little amount of time. How do we reach the unconverted? You know, how do we get outside of these walls where people come and want to listen to these issues. I mean, Steve's doing it in a great way by getting into, into television. Uh, there's a lot more that we can do, and I just want to put that down as a bit of a theme for us to think about as we go on. Thank you. How did, my thing is, how did we stop people from smoking? You know, you can go to a party now and not one person smokes in a party anymore. Mm. How do we stop people from not wearing helmets? on their bikes. Mm. It's the same thing. Mm. It was a social change program yep. that took years and years and years. Yep. And that's what we need to do. But we also need a minister that's not overtly, um, overtly against anything conservation. Mm. We need a minister who, we need to vote for a start. Mm. Um, it's an appalling voting turnout rate. Um, but the thing is that there needs to be funding and resourcing for this. Um, the process of, of sea change, you know, the whole way through this, if the talk, hit, you know, if we hit the road with this, then that's what will happen. Our immigration rate to Auckland is going to change exponentially in the next 10 years. And if we don't address that, then Kawakawa Bay is going to be dead in the next two years. So it's, a, it's an application of social social change and social license. I have a license as kaitiaki to make a difference and that's what I think will make, what will change. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think it's a, it's a cultural change. You know, there are a few examples like seat belts. You know, who thinks it's a bad idea to put a seat belt on these days? Those social changes need to happen with things like littering. 
and you know I'm going to talk about that if yes. anyone knows what I do. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. we, you know, we, what what we talk about is having this top-down approach with the policy, but a bottom-up approach at the same time to try and hit it from all angles. The ultimate motivator for us is leadership, and in the context of conserving shellfish, the precious intertidal zone. There's only one leadership that I can truly be motivated by, and that's Tangata Whenua. Mm. Stepping up to the plate and calling for a blanket rahui across the entire Te Kapa Moana. Mm. And I can give you an absolute assurance mm. that the New Zealand Sport Fishing Council will support that. The 33,000 paid up affiliates will come to the table, we'll go through our grinding process, but we will endorse and support and back Tangata Whenua to the hill. Oh, that's a pretty solemn commitment which I yes. feel good about making yeah. here. Yeah. It's about show us the leadership and we'll back you. Okay. Good work. <laughs>